Okay, good morning everyone. We are here today for a webinar on course modifications for spring 2020, Less is More Pedagogy with Dr. Stephanie Norander from Communication Across the Curriculum. Um, Dr. Norander, welcome, and we're going to hand over the microphone to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Jules, and thanks to all of you for joining me here on this um, Friday morning. Uh, greetings from my basement, and thank you for dedicating your time this morning to um, learning and listening and discussing with each other about how we can approach the extraordinary circumstances of this semester in our teaching and learning. So I'm the Executive Director of Communication Across the Curriculum, and I'm also an Associate Professor of Communication Studies. And typically, when we partner with the CTL in doing webinars, we typically talk about ways that you can integrate communication into the classroom. But today's session is a big step back from that, and we're going to talk much more broadly about adapting our pedagogy and teaching practices to the current situation. Now, I know that many of you, along with many more of our faculty across campus, have been working with our fabulous CTL on transitioning your courses to online and have done that very quickly um, and have done it just with amazing care in terms of um, moving your activities and your, your schedule and everything that you had planned, moving that online. Today, we're not going to talk about technology and tools and resources. We're going to be talking about modifications that you can make, maybe you already have made, um, but you can make as we go forward. But more on that in a moment. Before we get started, let me just do a brief virtual check-in. If you could use your chat box there at the bottom, and if you could just give us a few word answer on what was a bright spot for you from the past week. I know we're inundated with um, most positive news right now and not the most positive time, but would love to hear. It can be personal, work, what have you. What's been a bright spot for you from the past week? Just use your chat box. Seeing lots of comments about students and how they're participating. Um, their thoughtfulness and reflections and that they're not having major issues, weather, absolutely, the sun's back out. Um, and our students are adapting. I'm noticing that as well in my class. I'm really amazed at how well our students are adapting and um, amid quite a bit of stress in their personal and work lives and academic lives. And being able to find some sort of normalcy, that's great. All right, thank you um, for all of your answers on there. Love to start off on a positive note. Um, as we go forward today, please feel free to use this chat box to ask any questions at any time. We have a moderator, and also we should have a chance to address some of those questions there at the very end. So what are we gonna talk about today? First of all, when we talk about less is more pedagogy, we are talking about shifting our priorities for the current circumstances. So I just want to emphasize that this is, this is atypical, right? This is not what we typically talk about when we talk about course design, when we talk about ideals of course design, assignment design. But again, we're in unusual circumstances. So our main goal today is that you walk away feeling empowered um, to make modifications as you see fit for your course, for your discipline, for these specific circumstances. So we're going to talk about shifting our priorities um, for the semester. We're going to talk about some practicalities um, briefly that are shaping the semester. And then we'll talk about five areas in which you can think about modifying your course for the remainder of the semester and ideas for how to do that. So priorities. This is coming, this presentation really grew out of uh, messages from our provost who I think has done a phenomenal job of talking about the need to emphasize um, kindness, emphasize support for each other, and emphasize flexibility um, at this time, as well as conversations that I've had with the faculty over the past couple weeks since we've been going through this transition 
and pedagogical knowledge, what we know about how we can adapt to rapidly changing circumstances. So when we talk about our priorities, first of all, in transitioning our classes, right, and continuing, because this is a very fluid situation, so continuing to adapt to the changes, we have to acknowledge that we're in a time of change and disruption. Now, eventually, this will settle and we will recalibrate to a new normal. Um, but right now, we're still in the midst of it. So we are in the midst of this pandemic um, and just acknowledging that our life circumstances are constantly changing and disruption is expected. Communicate compassion and extend community. Again, I'll draw on the words of our provost who has mentioned in various forums, also through her emails, um, that this is the most important thing we can do for each other right now, for ourselves, for each other as colleagues, as well as for our students who are facing the same stresses that we are. And then lastly, when we make decisions, whether it be at the micro level, and gosh, you know, I was thinking about grading this assignment this way, but now I'm not so sure, or at the larger macro level of, you know, there's something that's not working with this course, always think about what are the ways I can minimize friction and maximize the ease of transition. And I say this, again, going back to that pedagogical knowledge, that we have a lot of tools and resources. We're living in a time where there are incredible, incredibly innovative tools that we can use um, to teach online. But right now is maybe not the time to take on a steep learning curve for yourself or for your students with some of the more innovative tools, unless you're super comfortable with them. And just knowing that that's okay, you are choosing to prioritize that ease of transition over maybe at another time learning how to use that special tool um, that really gets at some cool things in terms of technology. Okay, the last word that I'll say on this as far as priorities is I really appreciated, again, this was something that came from the provost and I think was paraphrased by my own department chair, that you know these times require us to have flexible approaches to the way that we assign, accept, and assess work. And that's okay. Um, no one is expecting you or your students to simply be able to pick up the course you had planned and merely just replicate it in full for the rest of the semester as if none of this change and disruption is happening. And why is that the case? Well, very briefly, let's just talk about some practicalities. I think that we are all very well aware of these, so I won't spend a lot of time. But just know that this applies to all of us, our students included, that we are facing a lot of uncertainty, um, both in terms of health as well as financial um, stability. And that could be us directly, it could be family members, it could be friends, it could just be our broader community. Accessibility, this is a um, really big deal for our students and um, them transitioning online. In particular, you know, this wasn't what they had, if your course was not already online or hybrid, it wasn't necessarily what they had planned, nor was it what you had planned. And it is a safe assumption that a majority, over half of our students, are working primarily on their de devices, right, on a smartphone. Um, they may have access to a laptop or computer, um, but, you know, our public access to labs, to libraries, so on and so forth, um, has been closed. So the number of um, options that they have available to them has narrowed, even since a couple weeks ago when we first transitioned having access to the internet, and how, how many of you, I will just throw this out there, I would venture to say most of us, if not all of us, have had a point um, at some time over the past couple of weeks where our internet connection or the particular technology, WebEx, what have you, just wasn't quite working, we got the frozen screen, we couldn't hear someone, um, they're having the same struggles, right? And then accessibility of time, we'll talk more about that in a moment. And then lastly are the shifting living situation and roles. And so in conversations I've had with my own students, I know that some of, and, and the class that I teach this semester is primarily graduating seniors. 
um, but the stresses that they are facing have been moving back home to be with family, but still trying to figure out, okay, do I have to keep paying for my lease, but the leasing option, the leasing office is closed. Um, what about my roommate? I have a roommate who can't pay, continue to pay their lease. Um, shifting family roles, whether that be they're in a parenting role or they're moving back to be with family unexpectedly. Um, having a support system, feeling isolated and bored, um, and losing jobs left and right. Um, this is huge. I know my students, you know, are the ones that are still working, you know, primarily in part-time service-oriented jobs. They're just waiting for the call that they're going to lose their job. So all of that creates stress, personal stress, um, and disruption in our lives. So let's talk about how we can, with that shifted those shifted priorities, how we can make modifications um, to our syllabus um, in light of this. Let me preface this by saying this is not an all or nothing approach. Um, you may, I'm going to talk about five different areas that you can modify and give you some ideas for each of them. It's also not an exhaustive list. You may have your own ideas for how to modify. And also, it's okay to say, you know, there's one point out of there that may really work for me or I may think about, but some of that's not going to work for me. That's absolutely okay. We typically talk about situated learning and communication across the curriculum, that you want to adopt the ideas as they are situated in your course and in your discipline. The same applies here. Some of you are working in disciplines, our professional disciplines, for example, where accreditors, your professional accrediting body, bodies, have, you know, come out with guidelines and said the same content has to be covered, right? We can't scale that content. That's okay. You have to defer to that. You can perhaps adapt or use other modifications in your approach. So just know that it's not all or nothing. It's okay to take what you want to take and leave what you want to leave from this. All right, the first area is modifying learning goals. Why would you want to do this? Well, given the situation and the practicalities that we've talked about, I think it's fair to say that all of us are operating on cognitive overload right now. And the way to look at this is to pair back to the essential so that if your students leave with nothing else from this course in this semester, because this is probably any one single course is probably not going to be the big thing that they remember from this semester, right? Probably not for any of us. Um, we will remember what it was like to live through a pandemic and work through a pandemic, but we probably won't remember all of the things, right, that um, we were supposed to get out of the course, and that applies to us as teachers. So if we pare that down to the essentials and say, okay, what is the one or two most critical elements, right? What are the minimum viable components? Apply this with your own judgment, because some of you are teaching courses that are in a sequence, right? And so perhaps it's a really important course in the major, and students must be able to do X, Y, and Z in order to start their course next fall, the next in the sequence. Others of you are teaching an elective or a capstone or a, just a, there's wide variation there. So again, use your judgment in applying this. But the idea is that you can get clarity, just write down if nothing else, if there were one or two things that students could take with them that helped move their learning forward in this course, in these circumstances, what would that be? And it's okay to modify and let your students know, you know, we had a list of five really big learning goals. We're only going to focus on one from here on out or two, whatever the case might be. Once you've uh, thought about what the critical components of your course are, I encourage you to also think about modifying content. Think about how you maybe reduce the amount of new or additional content that you introduce. And one way to think about this is if you're on that path of, okay, I really paired back to one or two critical learning goals, what's the content that supports that, right? 
Um, we usually don't lap for content that we want students to be exposed to, right? We have a lot in our areas of specialty and expertise. We have a lot that we want students to be exposed to, we want them to grapple with, and we want them to, you know, really dig into. But for this semester, consider what are the critical pieces of content, right? What is maybe most important? What, if nothing else, would I want them to remember of having been exposed to in terms of content? Consider, this is one way to do this, consider leveraging um, content that was covered prior to this transition, perhaps prior to spring break or just after that. So do you want them just to dig deeper into that and focus on summary and application? Again, that's okay. It's okay to scale back your amount of new content introduced at this point. A third area in which you can think about modification for the semester is in your assignments. This has to do with reducing the number and complexity of assignments, right? And again, there's wide variation. Um, across our different courses and across our different teaching styles on this, some of us have, you know, maybe a few high-stakes assignments that the student's grade really depends on. Others of us have many, many assignments, maybe a mix of low and high. Whatever this picture looks like for you, think about in these remaining weeks, right, how might I reduce the number and complexity of assignments? And again, just supporting that critical element. Um, that is what you need to focus on at this time. This is hard for many of us. I know it's been really hard for me because I had a really cool assignment that I was gonna do this semester. I had a podcast assignment that had students in groups and doing interviews and researching and putting together a podcast for their final project. I actually decided to transition that to a much lower stake. Let's get familiar with the audience and the genre of podcasting, and they're doing it individually. So they're not producing what I had planned, but it was too complex, um, and it was too much of a high-stakes assignment that was coming at the end of the semester, and I did not want to set my schedule up for that. And I'll talk more about schedule here in just a moment. Some things that you can consider is leaning more on low stakes, so consistent weekly low stakes assignments such as discussion boards, reflections, responding to a prompt, um, leaning more on those rather than multiple high stakes assignments. Whatever you do, keep your instructions very clear. I encourage you just to have a bulleted list of here's what you need to do um, and here's, here are my expectations. Keep the submission process simple. This goes back to that notion of accessibility. Always offer students an alternative of, hey, you know what, if you can't get into Canvas at that time, you can just email this to me. Also, um, plan for technological glitches and have alternatives. There was an email that came out on Monday of this week specifically naming WebEx and Respondus, and there are probably others that don't work well on mobile, if at all, and so having alternatives for students, right? Not building our whole um, expectations for students around access to that particular technology, because we don't have the time to try it out and work out the glitches and be in class and work with them and you know develop a plan for how they're gonna access this. Um, we only have what's left of the semester. And so allowing for those alternatives, being willing to answer their questions, and not penalizing students um, for having to use any type of alternative. Reconsider group assignments. I gave an example of this at the beginning when I was talking about my own ideas for my assignment. I did decide to transition that to an individual assignment. Again, if that allows you more flexibility, great. It's not that students cannot do group assignments at this time. Do have a plan, though, for what if one of their group members, for personal reasons, right, needs to take an exit ramp or is not feeling well or has the mental stress of what's going on, is that going to penalize the whole group? 
they are having trouble scheduling right now and coordinating, and so just keep that in mind. Be prepared for how you're going to handle that in terms of what your expectations were for group assignments and adapting them and modifying them to the current circumstances. Okay, let's talk about modifying your schedule, and this goes right along with modifying assignments. The first thing to keep in mind is that you want to have a consistent and super easy to follow schedule for the remaining weeks. It's okay even if you already transitioned to online and if you want to make further tweaks, it's okay. Just communicate that to students and make it very clear that your number one priority is to support them and make this as flexible and as accessible for them to support their successful completion of the semester. So weekly deadlines at the same time every week um, work really well. Any synchronous activities that you have planned, make them optional from here on out. Don't make them a required part of the grade. And this goes back to that time and accessibility as well as device and accessibility, internet, um, not having them locked in to a specific time just provides a lot more flexibility. It's absolutely okay and encouraged to have synchronous activities, but make that synchronous part optional. There's a video option. You're not being penalized if you can't get on right at this time. Um, lessen the level of high stakes expectations at the end of the semester. So this has to do with how you plan out your assignments for the remainder of the semester. One strategy is to think about not having students' grades be dependent on a major project at the end of the semester, right? Or have their completion of the course be dependent on what's going to happen three, four, five weeks from now. And there are different ways you can do that. Again, you can transition to more low stakes throughout that kind of evens out your schedule. You could pull up, reduce the complexity of a particular high stakes assignment and make it due sooner rather than later if that's, in, you know, if that's supportive and not more stressful on your students. There are different ways that you can do that, but just thinking about not having all of that weight at the end, the final days of the semester. Plan for alternatives and exit ramps that do not penalize students. So allowing students, if they need to, know, okay, here's my grade, right? We've Here's our schedule. Here's exactly what I need to do to finish, to complete. But if I need to pull back, what does that look like for me? And then lastly, Last one I'm going to talk about here is modifying your grading scheme. Now, we just, <clears throat> excuse me, just in the past 24 hours, we've gotten the updates about our institution allowing for students to take the option of a pass no credit. I'm not going to go into detail on that. You can certainly read more up on that um, and absolutely talk with in your departments and your chairs if you have questions about that because there's a lot of variation across courses and across requirements to what that's going to mean. But what I do want to talk about are some modifications that you can manage within your own course. And again, I just want to tell you that it's okay to present students with a modified grading scheme. You can lessen their uncertainty. Um, you could consider, for example, uh, grading on complete and complete for the rest of the semester for your individual assignments. Um, whatever you do, just make it clear, easy to understand, and you want to provide them with clear paths for successful completion. So again, it's not that question mark at the end of the semester, you know, dependent on how I perform on my final exam, but otherwise I have no idea how I'm going to do in this course. That, I, I'm not saying that that's a bad way to set up your course. What we're talking about is modifying for this particular semester so that they're not left in that situation. And then lastly, just make sure that you set reasonable expectations for yourself in terms of grading as well as formative feedback. Streamline your formative feedback. Um, streamline your grading. So 
if this means pulling back and having a more simplified rubric that is, you know, here are the things you did well, here are things you can improve on, that is absolutely okay for this semester. Because remember, you're going back to, if they were to leave with one or two things that help them grow as a learner, as a thinker, what would that be? And we oftentimes have very well designed and can be somewhat complex criteria, rubrics that help guide our feedback on assignments. It's okay to let go of some of that for this semester to privilege what is the most important, right? What is the most important thing here? And keeping your gradebook updated, this just helps students know constantly where they stand. Um, and I do want to talk a little bit about an example modification of grading with saying, this is my own example. This does not in any way, shape, or form apply to every course. So what I have done in my course, adapting some of these strategies, is that I just said, okay, all the grades that you earned prior to spring break, those remain intact. And then I gave students their midterm grade. Here's your standing in the course. Anything that you complete after that point will be graded complete or incomplete. And here's where I gave myself and the students a little bit of flexibility. And I said, as long as you complete all remaining assignments, right, which were reduced, um, as long as you complete those, you can maintain your current grade. For example, if you have an A, you can't get higher than an A. Or you can move up a letter grade if you complete all of the assignments. Um, and incomplete assignments may lower your grade. So that's been my own approach. Take that with a grain of salt. That does not work for everyone, but it just gives you some ideas. I also have further language that I've used to talk with students about modification. Happy to share that with you if any of you are interested. Let me pause there. We're almost out of time, but let me see if we have any questions from would like to see the language. I am happy to send that out. I can send out my, um, I did a modified syllabus, happy to send that out to all of you. All right, thank you all. And let me just end on the note um, talking about, you know, our bright spots from the week. I did one of these earlier this week, and the same thing applies today. It just really picks me up to see um, how engaged we are um, as colleagues and how dedicated we are to doing the best for our students. So I just want to end on a positive note of saying thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, and, and I know these are trying circumstances, and I just see how hard faculty at UNC Charlotte are working to um, do their best and do their best for their students. Continue to reach out to your students. I do see a question here. Let me see. How do you stay connected with students without overwhelming them with announcements and emails? That is a great question because I think we are all on overload right now. Let me just briefly say one thing that um, you can do is if you use Google Chat, you can create, depending on how many students you have, you can put a chat box in there and create a group for your students and say this is a place that anyone can ask a question at any time. Um, I'm offering voluntary weekly Google Hangouts that are just ask questions, and I just put them on the calendar at one time. Um, but everything else, I, I'm trying to limit my announcements to Monday and Friday. So just trying to keep that on a schedule, and otherwise you can connect with me. I don't think we have a magic answer to that one, but it is really good to be conscientious of the length of your emails and announcements um, and, you know, how attention drops off after, right, We have if we have to scroll down and to the frequency of, of them. So anything you can do to be clear and concise is helpful at this time. Thank you all so much. I wish you um, a good weekend. Be well, be safe, and be peaceful. Thank you.